Guys, welcome to the Pure Progress Lifestyle Podcast, where the only thing that matters is progress. Today, I'm joined by a special guest, Heather. You are a manifestation business strategist and interpersonal healer, or intuitive healer, healer my mistake. Um, anything I missed out? Anything you want to add in there? Yeah. Um, so I'll just kind of explain a little bit about what I do as a manifestation strategist and intuitive healer. So essentially what I, as an entrepreneur myself, I've been an entrepreneur for seven years. I've had two different businesses mm -hmm. um, that have been really successful. Um, one was like an in-person local business that I ran. And then now I'm on, I have a virtual business. Um, so I have a lot of information about like the masculine side of things where you take action and like the strategies and marketing <laughs> and all that stuff. Um, and of course I've learned from the best I've, I've learned marketing from Dean Graziosi, uh, self mastery from Tony Robbins and just, you know, a bunch of different people. So what I find though, for me specifically is a lot of the things that people are missing is the feminine part of business. And that's in anyone, whether you're a man or a woman, really? um, needs this and it's be, it's the art of receiving so mm -hmm. we can be go 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 all the time but mm -hmm. if we don't step back and just kind of let it come to us or let ourselves receive then you know we're missing a big key component and that is the manifesting process essentially is to be able to just step back i don't know maybe uh some of your listeners or maybe you have uh seen the the documentary called the secret have you seen that uh i've never watched it i i mean uh if you're an entrepreneur, you've heard all about it. You already know. Right. It's right. like, yeah. yeah. Well, even the men, even the men in that show will talk about how you have to sit back and be grateful and trust. Okay. that It's that trusting portion. It's the trusting and the being, you know, I know it's coming, this gratitude attitude. It's that is the art of receiving. That is the feminine portion. That is allowing yourself to be nurtured and allow yourself to receive, right? Because as a ma in the masculine energy, we're going, going, going and giving and giving and giving. Yeah. So the intuitive healing portion that comes in with this is we need to identify because women, especially, I think everyone, it, we're just in an era of like a wounded masculine where whether you're an entrepreneur or not, if you are in the working class period, we are in a constant state of survival and stress right. and like, we have to go, 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 go. And so that is what I would refer to as a wounded masculine. So mm. that means we're never taking time to just sit back, relax, re uh, rest, rejuvenate, replenish ourselves mm. and receive. So like I said, it, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, we all have these aspects because I know for me, I've been in my wounded masculine for a long time. I grew up with a single mom. Um, I mean, she had relationships here and there, but for the most part, she was a single mom. My parents were divorced and she was a hard worker. She was also an entrepreneur and she was that go, 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 go. Don't mess with me. I've got, I've got hustling mm -hmm. to do, you know? Right. And so like, that's how I've always been as well. So the healing portion comes in. That's the only reason I've been able to allow myself to surrender, to relax, to receive anything is because I went in and I kind of had to identify and not everybody will resonate with this, but I know for me and like my clients, like who I attract um, and who I end up working with, this is what they need as well. Right. So the healing portion to be able to sit back into this feminine approach and allow yourself to manifest your goals without killing yourself. Right. Because that's my dad as well. My dad died at a very young age working because mm. that's all he did. He actually had a heart attack at work because he was so stressed and he took, he, he wasn't taking very good care of himself, which again, that's a very feminine thing to do to care about your health and to show up for yourself in that way, whether you're a man or a woman, right? So anyways, I grew up in this workaholic state of being around me in my environment. So having to heal this so that I could relax, what I realized was, for me personally, when I was in this state of go, go, go and overworking and, and taking action and just showing up and overextending myself, what I was actually doing is I was just trying to show my worth. I was trying to prove my value to the world. Mm. And a lot of me not being able to take a step back or take a break or take care of myself or allow myself to relax and receive was coming from this energy of, if I am, if, if I'm not doing something, I'm not valuable. 
If I'm not doing something, I'm not worthy of receiving anything. But what all that was doing, and this is where the law of attraction comes in. This is where manifesting Mm. comes in. When you are go, go, go. And when you are do, 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 your plate is capped. Your plate is full. You don't have actually any energetic, emotional, mental, or physical room to receive anything. And that's why my dad lived in poverty. He worked paycheck to paycheck. He worked so hard. He never allowed himself to receive anything. Same Mm. with my mom. My mom would work so hard and she would actually receive a lot, but it would just go right out the door because of, you know, she wanted so much in life. So the scale to, it was, it was like, she could make a lot of money but her lifestyle was a lot of money. So it wasn't, it wasn't, she was never in an overflow because she had no room for it. She was always going, she was always doing. I don't know if that, if that makes sense, but that's what I have found the purpose of being able to be in balance between the masculine and feminine, between action taking and receiving is if you want to have an overflow, if you want to experience an overflow, there has to be space for it. Because if you are constantly frustrated and stressed and in survival mode in that wounded masculine going, 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 the universe is going to see she, can't, she, he, it doesn't matter who it is. They can't handle anymore. We're not going to give her more. They're not ready because really? here's what's going to happen. We're going to sabotage it. Wow. How did you make this discovery? Well, I mean, it's just been, <laughs> I mean, it's just been my, through my own experience. Like what I find is. It, it it's really that's kind of a complex conversation, I guess, because it's well, um, let's have it. Let's have the complex conversation. I, I love <laughs> I love it. So how I made the discovery was just a mixture of doing my own inner healing work, and mm-hmm. then of course my own research into the law of attraction, into manifesting, into healing, and you know what I what I discovered was how I am as an individual, one of my strengths, one of my intuitive strengths is I just have this knowing of things. And so what that means is whenever something comes to me, it just feels like I I can just tell if it's right or wrong. Mm -hmm. And that's just following your gut, right? Like that's just intuition. Everybody has it. I'm not like some special psychic or anything like that. Everybody can do it. It's just tapping into your intuitive abilities, right? People talk about listen to your gut or listen to your intuition, but I don't think a lot of us actually really know what that means. No. Well, from what my understanding is females are much better at it than men. And, <laughs> I mean, you know, just to add more of that damaged masculinity side of, cause we're always on the go, go, especially if you're in entrepreneurship, where it's like, go, 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 go. Like even right. your body's like, Dude, you got to take a break. You're like, no, nah, man. Like, I'm, I'm just being weak. I got to keep going. Exactly, and that's yeah. and it's even harder. It can be even harder for men. But I mean, you know, and I get that because I mean, I, my boyfriend's the same way. Like, he is like, go, go, go. And if he, you know, if I try to tell him to take a break or whatever, because that's my dad too, right? And I'm like, I don't, you know, I don't want you to burn yourself out here. Like, you've got to take these breaks. You've got to set these boundaries. And he's mm. like. Well, when I'm in around this crew of men, I'm going to be perceived as weak or I'm going to be perceived as, you know, not. And guess what? You just aligned with the point that I made earlier. You're whenever we are showing up in that wounded masculine, we are trying to prove our worth. Mm. It goes back to self-worth. Mm. So if a man or a woman is saying, I cannot take a break because of how I will be perceived, it is a self-worth. It is a value issue. It is a self-value thing. It goes back to this insecurity that needs to be addressed, that needs to be healed in order for us to run at full capacity, for us to be able to take action and to make really awesome things happen, but also have the space to receive an overflow. So it's not like just this constant, like I can't hold on to anything because I don't have the space for it. Right. Well, I mean, there's so many ways that uh, you could go about it. Like there's, I mean, men have just been trained, like you got to work a hundred, like 26 yeah. hours out of a 24 work day to get, yeah. to get any, like just to break even in business. Okay. Yeah. And then told if you have any slight enjoyment, like, especially from a lot, a lot of coaches, like if you take a break or whatever, like that, the next man who's trying to build something is going to outdo you. So you're, you're weak. You're just, you know, making excuses. 
well, and, and it's like, nothing. it's just so a constant form of sabotage. Mm -hmm. you can ne it you're is. Never it's a anymore. cycle of sabotage. And again, it all comes back to this. Number one, I know my worth. I know my value. And I trust that I will create this legacy because he, here's another thing that goes, another thing that goes back to self-worth. If you know what you're doing and how you're serving is worth what it's worth, if you're confident in that and you really trust that and you're confident in yourself as an individual, mm -hmm. think about it this way. There are a hundred burger joints. There are a hundred car places, right? There are thousands of people doing the same thing. What makes them different is their uniqueness as individuals, as a brand. Mm. People will choose you over the next guy or the new guy or whatever because of you. And if you don't believe in you, if you don't have this unshakable self-worth and confidence in what makes you stand out, people feel that. People will see, oh my God, like they're doing something right. That's why people who are in this idea of, I'm just going to copy this person's business, it's not always, it doesn't really work. No, no, because it doesn't. Entities that are successful, they are successful because of the individual, the individuality of it. And now, of course, these brands, they become, they become big, but it started with one person yes. or it started with this small, very small group of people who put themselves into it. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's the key. It all goes back to you. And if you don't have the vitality, if you don't have the self-worth, then your business will reflect it every time. Mm. Everything that you show up in will reflect it. Your relationships will be sabotaged, your careers. It doesn't matter because it goes back to how secure am I with me, my worth, my uniqueness, and how unwavering am I to be confident in what I, what I have to offer for this world, whether I'm taking a break or not. Right. Right. It's almost like uh, people are just like trying to be perfectionists to the maximum right. degree and they just yes. can never just let go. No. Yeah, exactly. Like, and that it, it all goes back to the healing work. So yeah. we've got to figure out what the root cause of this perfectionism, this overworking, this lack of value is. We've got to figure out where did that stem from? And here's where I think people get afraid and what I, what I enjoy the most about healing work is you don't necessarily have to relive any trauma or remember mm. because there are plenty of instances where I've done healing and I didn't even have to know where it stemmed from. I just mm. had to know that the root cause was a lack of self-worth or uh, the root cause was X, Y, Z. I just needed to know what the root cause was. And I didn't have to, I didn't have to try to travel back in time of my memory and figure out what exact moment caused this. Because the truth is, when we have rage or temper issues or a lack of self-worth or whatever it is, the truth is there's not one moment that caused no. it. There's not this instant, um, you know, it, there you could maybe sometimes find the moment that it all kind of began. It all kind of started to unravel. Sometimes right. they don't have to. Because the truth of it, the truth of the fact matter is with that kind of stuff is it's not, one moment it's a summation of all these experiences of our life that has created this core root cause of how we're showing up mm -hmm. so you don't need to know the memories you don't have to relive your trauma you don't have to un unpack all your baggage to heal it right. and that's what i love about like the way that i've gone about it and what i figured out because when i was i started what i do because of trauma um trauma actually uh like a lot of trauma actually shattered my world and mm -hmm. I gave up my first career. I kind of walked away, even though it was like super, it, like it was the only thing good in my life at that time. It was the only thing going right. And was I was just like, uh, well, I was, I owned a salon. And okay. so it was the only thing it was making money. I had mm -hmm. clients, I was growing, it was booming. And um, my dad died. I went through a really traumatic divorce and I just had my daughter and I walked away from it because I was like, I'm not happy. I'm not mm. happy with how my life has turned out. And I thought like I, I'd figured it all out and right. the universe 
quickly made me realize I hadn't figured anything out. <laughs> right. <laughs> I hadn't figured anything out and uh, I needed to. So uh, it was scary, but I let, I, you know, I was just like, you know what? I paid off all my debt. I got to a situation where I could just like self-sustain for a little while. I had no idea what I was going to do. And that's when I like threw myself into my own inner healing. And these are when I had these like realizations of, you know, we can't receive if we're always going, we have to, um, we don't have to relive our trauma because of course, whenever I came home to heal, I bought all these trauma books. I, I, I took therapy. I did a bunch of different things, uh, mm. to just cause I didn't know where to start. Right. Like I right. had no idea what I was doing. So after looking at everything, I didn't like the fact that they're trying to get me to unpack all this baggage. Like there was something called timeline therapy. And it was like, remember every little moment that you've ever been through that actually only re-traumatizes. That, that just sounds, yeah, that just sounds draining. It's re-traumatizing. It, it like it, and, it, and it makes you actually sit deeper into the reason why you're so broken or effed up. You know, it's like, it, it actually just gave me more evidence as to why there was something wrong with me versus me actually doing any healing. So I was like, and I got mad. I got, but that frustration was actually the key because that's when I was like, this isn't working. So then what happened was I actually, um, I didn't, I didn't know, I had no idea what I was going to do, but I actually got the opportunity to become a health and life coach and a meditation instructor and a Reiki master. Um, and because of course I'd been reading about all these different things. And so I wanted to learn more about it. So I just took the class to get the certification. I had no idea what I was going to do with it or who I was going to be with it or whatever. Um, I just took it. And in those classes, paired with what I had learned in like how modern society is going about healing, right? Paired with these holistic methods of healing. What I did was I kind of saw, okay, we don't have to know these moments. We have to know what the root cause is, right? So if self-worth, and then of course with meditation, I learned how to go into my mind and create entities. So our lack of our self-worth, our mm -hmm. confidence, our joy, our anger, every little part of us is separate. We're, we are not one thing. We are multifaceted beings because if we were only one thing, we would always be confident or we would always be sad or we would always be angry. But the truth of the matter is we're everything. And Complex we have emotional all of creatures. It. Yep. Right. We have all of it. So something that I, I talk a lot about and when I teach it to make the it make as much sense as possible there's actually a kids movie it's called inside out maybe you've seen it um and it's where this girl it's a story of this girl and how she's experiencing the world and the main plot of the movie is being in her head and there's different characters for all of her emotions and how little things happen in her emotions press these buttons to decide how she's going to react to things mm -hmm. so essentially what i teach the easiest way to do this healing work is to identify what's going on. And sometimes the first thing you start with is you're you're angry all the time, right? Every little thing is frustrating you. You're always stressed out. You're super impatient, right? Like I know that's where I started because oh, yeah. when I was in a wounded was masculine, that's what happened. I was so impatient. <laughs> I was super frustrated, like easily. So I had to start there. So I identified my anger and I created this character for anger and anger could be this made up character or it could just look like you, but you're angry, right? And you just close your eyes and you see yourself being angry or this made up character, whatever feels right. And what you do is you go in and you observe this anger without judgment. And what I have found for me is anger might want to cuss you out, might want to punch you, might want, but what's happening is we're not allowing as society, the reason we're so pent up with all of this stuff is because as society, we're like, mm -mm, don't show that go get a beer, go get laid, go smoke some weed, do whatever to get yourself right because we don't want to see you act like that. So internally, we're doing the same thing. Every time we are impatient or angry or whatever, we're saying, hey, you don't need to act like that. You're not, again, going back to you're not worthy of feeling feelings. You're not worthy of being a human. You're not worthy of having this experience. And you're constantly rejecting yourself and suppressing yourself because that's what happens that's what our parents do. Our parents said, stop crying. You're, you're supposed to be a man. You need to learn more. You're this, you're that. Right. And we start mm. absorbing this. We start taking all this in and we start treating ourselves that way. Right. So instead of just letting the emotions express itself, we start suppressing it.
Mm. And it starts becoming this automatic thing. And then we start to wonder, why can't I be more patient with my kid? Why am I always yelling at my dogs? Like, what's like, why is this happening? Why am I so easily frustrated? And it's not, it wasn't until I took the time to just without judgment, observe my emotions. I created that character or I sat with myself in anger and I saw it from like, as if I was this observer, right? Like, so there was two people in my mind, like I said, this kind of maybe sounds silly, but it's, it's so effective. <laughs> and so like, I'm sitting in a, an observer position and then I see myself in front of my, in my mind's eye as angry. Mm-hmm. And I'm just kind of like, I can feel it. I can see her and she is like going crazy. She's throwing tantrums. She's screaming. She's whatever. And then the more I showed up for those emotions, I've had to do this with any emotion that I believe like that I was stuck with, right? Like it might be abandonment. It might be um, self-worth. It might be sadness. It might be whatever it is. Uh, Loneliness, isolation, right? Like that was a big one for me. Um, I know I didn't want to be alone, right? Like that was one I I struggled with codependency for a long time. So, Mm. and I think every, and here's the thing, humans, as humans, we all have the same five core fears, okay? We don't want to die. We don't want to lose body parts. We don't want to lose our inner authority. We won't, we don't like being told what to do or, or feeling yeah. like we're being controlled. Um, and we, we don't want to be alone and we don't want to be rejected. Mm-hmm. These are the five main core, core human fears. Everyone has them. And, yeah. and if you, if you say you don't, it's because you've rejected them for so long. And there's so much like walls between you and this fear, right? <laughs> you know, that's funny that you say most people or everybody has the fear of losing body parts. You know, I, I can't think of a scenario that I haven't gone out in life to where just even you could, the lawnmower guy was out there like, fuck man, I would not want to get my leg caught up in that. Cause then I'll lose it. Like, no. So your mind's immediately constructing ways not for that, for that to not happen. Right. So it's just fascinating that uh, you say that because not many people talk about that, but it is real it's clear as day every day most people don't even think about it just right no, i'm not going well, down and that's road. the other thing though that's part of it is it seems so small it seems so innocent to not think about your emotions or to brush them to the side because mm. in some moments it is innocent and and the intention behind you brushing that emotion to the side or that uncomfortable feeling or that fear to the side is not to say fuck you or like screw off. I hate you self, right? That's not ever the intention. It's we've got to, we've got to maintain this presence. We've got to maintain this energy for our survival because those core fears and rejection and abandonment being two of them. If our mind perceives that we will be disowned by our community, here's the thing, thousands of years ago, whatever, right? Like community was really everything. We have so much stuff right now like that we're super separated as individuals, but community was everything. If your community kicked you out, you're homeless. You're going to starve to death. So our brains are still in that mentality of if I don't have connection, we need connection to thrive. Whether it's behind a screen or not, we still need that connection. We need these other people to thrive as a society it's become bigger now. So it's a little bit more separate, but it's still no different. We're all working together. Mm -hmm. Right. And so if community shuns us or rejects us, we're not going to live. We're not going to be okay. So meanwhile, it seems innocent. We're not meaning to reject ourselves. We're trying to protect ourselves, but it's, it's just imploding on our own Mm self-worth. And we're just, we're making a fake version of ourselves every time trying to show up in our business or our relationships or at work or wherever we're at so that society accepts us and we can do a good job and get that star or get that pat on the back. And that's why I believe there's a huge epidemic of the wounded masculine because we have translated action to success and we've translated rest to laziness or bums or whatever, right? Like, And so what has happened is there's not a balance. There's not a balance between action and rest. It's just action, action, action. Or we've got the people who aren't taking any action because they're so burnt out or whatever, whatever's led them there, right? 
So that's, there's no balance. And, and there, there's a lot more people in a wounded masculine than there is people who are so burnt out that they've given up. Right. I've, I've seen that, you know, in males and females. One with the males, it's the big thing, you know, the biggest thing for a male is they're, the number one thing they're taught is, yes, you know, you work hard for success, but the reality is why do most men want to work hard and do that? It's because they're told if they work really, really, really hard, their chances of getting laid goes up. And what they don't- Or their chances of relaxing right, or doing- And they're things, never yeah. told that you have to take a break because if you're never there, you yeah, you may get laid, fine, awesome. But if you're never there, that relationship's never going to flourish, ever. Right. So you're right. always burnt out. And you're then you're not always... going to get laid. Yes. <laughs> you're not going to get you're, laid you're at all. Not you're not getting laid anymore. So... Yeah, And then exactly. I... And then, or you're so burnt out that you, it's like, it's time for you to receive and you can't. Like you right. just don't, again, and that goes back to that, your cup, your, your plate is too full for you to receive more. Right. Because you've worked and you've over exhausted yourself, you've overextended yourself, you showed up to get the rewards, but now you have no room for the rewards. Right, without a doubt. And the other side, the female population, I see they're just, you know, in the same boat, not, you know, wanting to get laid, but just success driven success. Like, they, and it's like, they're just always on edge. And it's like, dude, you know, just chill out. Like, right what man does not like her that's you know in her feminine like she's just a joy to be around like that's right that's it for a man just be joyful like, that's all we need and they're always just no i can't i'm stressed out i can't do it i gotta do this 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 it's like yep. both both you know male and female are just suffering from the yes. overwork yep yep and like i said that that just goes back to neither one of them are allowing any balance for the feminine to come in and it's, it's purely out of a state of survival and out of this. And, and like I said, the roots of these survival is I'm not worthy enough. If I'm not taking action, I'm mm. not going to survive if I'm not taking action. Mm. And so that's where the inner healing comes in so that you can learn to find a genuine balance in both so that you can get to the root of whatever it is for you that's preventing you from allowing yourself to take that break, to step back and to receive because it's the hardest part is the hardest part because especially for an overachiever or an action taker or someone who has been in the wounded masculine most of their life, that's the hardest part because then the anxiety creeps in. It's like, oh, am I supposed to be doing something? I'm resting right, right. now. And then you're not really resting and it takes practice. It's a habit breaker. Mm. So most people feel like they're struck you know you know what this is so funny for me I feel like there's so many people that come to me in the beginning mm -hmm. and they think they need to be doing more yeah to achieve success right they're like if I could just meditate more or if I could just say more affirmations or if I could take more action yep. I would I would receive right. and I was there too I was like oh, if I could just have better this if I could just show up better if I could just pray better or whatever right we all, I would receive more. And yeah. it all goes back to you've missed the point. Oh. The prayer, the meditation is not for you to, to, it's not an action. Right. It's a, it is the absence of action actually. And they have missed the point. Right. And that, that's a really, it's a really hard concept for people to take, especially if you're broke and you're already working hard. You're like, I can't even, what are you even talking about? How do I even get that? Cause we've yeah. all been there. I've, it's always, you know, there's always some online coach that's in your mind, like telling you not working hard enough. Like for me, I know I've been there, like I want to stop, enjoy football. Like football is my, you know, go-to. Like, yeah. right? All I can hear is just this guy in the back of my voice. Oh, you're watching the game. Oh, good job, pussy. You're not fucking working hard. And it's just like, it's a killer. It's a killer, perpetual cycle. It is. But again, it's going back to who matters more, you or that voice. Right. And and what is that voice trying to, you know, and this is for anybody. This is exactly what I had to do, right? Because what do you need to trust 
right? Because here's the thing. What I find is there's two reasons that fear or insecurity is showing up. Mm -hmm. One, because you really aren't doing enough. Two, because you're doing too much and you're not allowing yourself to be proud of yourself or acknowledge any of it or be confident in the work that you've put in, right? So there are, two, again, there's balance and everything. So oh, let me ask you a question. How do you differentiate the two? That's, so that's, that's where you have to figure out because sometimes, and here's the thing, sometimes you can be in your wounded masculine, but you're not doing, so what I find is for me, when I, anxiety was showing up, anxiety would show up. So uh, it's, 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 it's a work in progress. It's getting to, it's what the, how to differentiate the two is building relationships with your emotions. If mm. I did not give myself a chance to just mm. not be afraid right. of like when a fear or insecurity came up, instead of pretending I didn't have it because I didn't want someone to think I'm crazy or whatever. Right. Instead of pretending I didn't have it, I decided okay, I'm going to be present with this as if it's a child coming mm -hmm. up to me saying right. that they need something or they've got something to tell me. Mm -hmm. And the more I practiced that, the clearer the messages became. Mm. I remember the first time I heard anxiety loud and clear. I was feeling super anxious one day and this was in an instant when I was actually not doing enough. But it was super, it was super cool. It was a really cool experience. So I was feeling anxious and I'm watching cartoons. Okay. I'm laying here. I'm watching cartoons. This is in the period of transitioning careers. I knew that I had been focused so much on healing work. I, I knew that I wanted to help people heal. Um, but I didn't know how I was going to do it or what I was going to do or anything like that. So I was watching cartoons, a cartoon that I had seen a hundred times mm -hmm. and I was laying there and I was feeling really anxious. So I paused my TV and I just went in and I was like, what do I need? I was like, what are you trying to tell me? I stopped. I didn't go smoke weed because that used to be my vice. I went, I would go get high every time I felt anxious and tell anxiety, fuck off, you know? Right. And so I didn't go get high. I just sat there. I didn't run away from it. I just sat there with it. And I was like, hey, what? Like, what? Well, I feel you. I know you're here, anxiety. So like, what's up? What do you need? And the message was, you can rest and relax. This is fine. Watch TV but maybe watch something that is going to expand your mind in the right direction. Mm. And so I was like, cause I was like, I didn't want to, I didn't want to ignore the fact that I had worked all day on my own healing and all this other stuff and being a mom and everything else that I've got to do. Right. I didn't want to ignore that. It was my time to relax, mm -hmm. but I was doing mindless things when I could have relaxed just as easily watching a documentary like the secret or whatever I chose to put on. Mm. That helped me understand more of what I was learning to do. Mm. So it was, it was a mixture of both in that moment. Like, but every moment's going to be different, but the more you allow yourself to sit, because here's the thing, I can't differentiate it for you. All I can do is teach you how to learn to communicate with yourself so that you can differentiate it. And so that you can be guided. That is called internal guidance. Right. What I received that day was internal guidance. I didn't need a coach. I didn't need, but guess what? That's, I'm the coach to help you differentiate those messages, to interpret those messages or whatever. Like that's who I am. But once you learn that, mm -hmm. you don't need a coach to tell you what to do. You might need to know how to run ads or you might need to know how to do X, Y, Z. I'm not saying don't get mentors because I, I still have mentors because I'm still learning how to do stuff. You know what I mean? But when it comes to why am I not feeling good enough or why am I anxious or why is this or why can't I relax? That's, that is a process that I, nobody can do for you. All I can do is I can show you, okay, we're going to create this, these scenarios and you're going to connect with it and you're going to learn the tools to practice, to build that communication line with your internal guidance so that you are actually genuinely following your intuition. Mm. Like your consciousness. Because right. your consciousness is always telling you something. Exactly. But if you can't hear it because you're constantly telling it to fuck off, maybe intentionally or unintentionally, right? Whether you know you're doing it or not, but every time you do something to like, you're like, oh, I'm feeling like I don't want to feel instead of dissecting it or instead of allowing yourself to figure out why it's it's here, it's a messenger, 
you go get high or you take a drink or you start working mm -hmm. more or you get you get laid or whatever the thing is, you just run. Mm -hmm. You're not intent. You're trying to protect yourself. You don't want to be uncomfortable, right? It's not like you're doing it because you hate yourself necessarily. It, you know, I don't want people to think that we do it because that's what we've been taught to do. Right. It's I, just I automatic. I don't think, you know, people necessarily like really hate themselves. Like how can you hate? Right. It's just, right. it's just, you know, this behavior that, that it's like, I always say, you know, to people, especially people that don't like themselves. It's, it's like, imagine somebody, you know, you have a friend. Okay. They're always breaking their word, they're always breaking their word. And it doesn't matter what it is. You're like, I can't trust that person because, you know, every time they tell me something, they go do something else. Okay. So cool. Imagine that that's you to yourself put over and over and over every right. single day. So it don't matter. Like you could be like line up five different things. If you don't execute on them, you're you're not gonna you're not gonna build trust with yourself. Exactly. But then you say, I'm gonna take this day off, you know, because I know like I'm I've listened to myself. I know like I'm getting burnt out. Like I gotta, you know, receive. As, as you like to put it, the feminine um, nature and receive. But then you're like, you know what? Going back to work. I can't, like, I, I can't just sit, I gotta go back to work. Uh, there's another time you just broke your word to yourself. Yep. So it's like yes, all these things. Exactly, exactly. And uh, I'm gonna make my boyfriend watch this. because <laughs> I'm always telling him this, it's just so funny. Um, but yeah, it it's, I know that it can be harder for men because especially, you know, men, Women, at least, you know, they want, you know, if sometimes, because sometimes women aren't allowed to show emotion or they're, you know, they're like lobotomized or whatever. Like that's how shit used to be, you know, like you're not allowed to show emotions. You're just supposed to be happy. <laughs> and uh, if you're not, then we're going to take any ability to do anything else away, right? We're going to put you on a pill or we're going to whatever. So it's scary for women too, in a different way. Mm. Like it's almost, it's like, some part of it is acceptable for women to have emotions or whatever, or a wide variety of emotions, but for men, it's, it's not accepted. Um, but instead of it being taken away, it's just rejected so hard and told that men don't feel this. Men don't do that. Men don't, you know, so men have built this idea. Mm -mm, we're not, we don't do this. Right. So if you're told something so many times, you start to program that into your mind. And so anytime that comes up, you 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 put a wall you're like mm -mm, no that's not real that's not a thing and you eventually believe yourself and it becomes this automatic I can't sit still I have to go and until you realize you are just operating off of false programming and conditioning that society has placed upon you and do the work to kind of allow yourself to rewind that and it's scary yeah. I get that it's scary I know why and, and the reason it's scary is because of the unknown. Mm. Well, who am I going to be if I allow myself to feel these feelings? Well, who's going to, what, how am I going to show up? Am I going to change? Am I going to be different? Yeah. And what I find is I I've just become who I really am. And so again, it's that new level of self-love and self-worth because if you're running away from doing that work, you're ultimately just running away from figuring out who you really are. And don't you want to do that? Yeah. Now, can you just be like a little bit more specific? Cause already I can already hear there's going to be some dudes that be like, see, there we go again. Always got to do the work. I'm lost again. What do we do? So the work is to, it, it's the healing work because mm. here's the thing. What I, it's, it's the dissecting of that thought of, I can't sit still. And then, so the first, so it's funny, I, I was with a client um, last week and we were talking about, we had been doing all this masculine stuff. We'd been doing, cause it's, it's an ebb and flow. I'm again, I, my advice is net it's, you're going to take action all day, but you've also got to take breaks. This is exactly what we're talking about. So it's a balance. It's not about not doing any more work. It's, it's not about that. It's about taking the time to receive as well. It's finding your flow. It's finding your balance. So yeah, I don't want people to confuse the fact you're just because you, you learn to receive doesn't mean you never work again. That's not it. Right. <laughs> um, so anyways, she, you know, she's talking to me. She's like, I just feel so burnt out. I just feel like I, I got sick 
last year and I've never really actually felt better. And, you know, we start talking about how she works past her hours. Like she's not actually getting, she's not even getting paid or she's just doing more work just because the boss is on her ass or whatever. And she's like missing out time with her kids and she's never just like there for herself, whatever. So we started to dissect this, right? And then the first step, so the dissection of it is just, where is this coming from? Where is this in your body? Who's telling you this? What's it feel like? What's the thoughts? What's the emotions? Mm-hmm. It's just getting clarity, sitting. And, you know, of course, for me, I guide my my clients into a meditative state mm-hmm. to kind of explore this. Because here's another thing. You're not going to be able to use meditation as a non-action until you clear the clutter of what mm-hmm. the hell's going on in your mind. Because mm-hmm. if you try to meditate and you don't clear that clutter, all you're going to hear is, I got to make dinner or I got to do this or to do, mm-hmm. to do, to do, to do, to do. And people are going, I can't meditate. Fuck this. Right? Yeah. So you can't actually meditate as a non-action until you've cleared that clutter. So we start to figure out, okay, so how do you feel when you think this? I feel anxious or I feel blah, whatever. All right, let's find her. Where is she? Or where is he? Right? Where is anxiety? And then I, and we get there. And then what we do is we start to just, it's an individual process. We start to get those messages, right? We just start to ask them, what do you need? What's going on? How are you feeling? And, you know, the message from my client specifically is we're sick because it's the only time we'll take a break. I'm keeping you sick. I'm keeping you sick because you will eventually force yourself to do nothing. But it's been this repetitive cycle of now I'm behind. And while I'm sick, I'm not actually recovering. I'm thinking about being behind. So it's this end of the cycle of I have to stay sick because I will eventually sit down, Uh but I won't ever actually get better. Mm. so then together with that emotion with that energy with these thoughts we come up with a plan a new plan okay so I'm like all right what is she telling you you need to do I need to take more time for myself sometimes it's super simple right it's like this basic thing like you need to actually take care of yourself dude (laughs) like it's like well duh okay but how do I do that okay so now we have to make a plan right okay again it's a balance okay a balance of planning, a balance of action taking, and then receiving, doing it, receiving it. Right. So what I told her, and then it's, it's a habit breaker. It's a habit breaker. That's what it is. It's, it's about habit change and replace. Right. So right now she's in a habit of go, go, go first thing in the morning. Um, and the only time she's actually taking care of herself is at night when she's so exhausted and she's not actually present for it. Right. Because, or whatever. So we're going to build this habit. While you're getting ready, say this mantra or do this, do this. That will help you reprogram your mind. I will commit to showing up for myself, taking breaks, filling my cup up, whatever the mantra is, right? And then when you're overstimulated, when you're feeling frustrated or when you notice these things, because of course she's been with me for a while. So she's built that awareness pretty well. She's like, I know, but I don't do, right? I know when I need to stop, but I don't stop, right? right? So then I'm like, okay. The next thing we've got to practice is just stop. And guess what? When you stop, you say, okay, I'm going to set a timer 10 minutes. I'm not going to work for 10 minutes. The first week, the first three weeks, I don't know how long, but for the last 20, 30 years, you've been not building that boundary, building that habit. So for the first week to month or whatever, when you set that 10 minute timer, you're not actually going to relax. That 10 minute timer is going to be you versus you. Right. And the only success that you have had in that moment is I'm building a new habit Mm. Mm. is I'm creating a new relationship. And in that 10 minutes, while you're you versus you, you're being kind. Mm -hmm. You're trying to reparent. Mm -hmm. Does, I don't know if that's making sense, but it's, 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 you you can't go from go, go, go to receive. It's a process. It's not going to happen overnight just because you tell yourself to, or it already would have, you would have already taken your day off instead of not being still. Right. It's a process of, I'm going to force myself to take this 10 minutes right right now. And I'm going to be kind to myself when I'm telling myself that I'm a pussy for doing it. Right. Right. (laughs) Like for that whole entire 10 minutes, I am committed to building this new relationship, to building this new habit. Mm. I love that. I love that. And that's the, that, and then you have to look at that as, wow, I'm 1% closer. I'm really proud of myself. Yeah. That was hard. It was uncomfortable, 
It is. It really is. Like it sounds so simple and basic, but it's really, 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 really difficult. Now, what would you say the best time to do that is? So for me mm -hmm. and what I suggest my clients to start with, I make sure that before I start my day, no matter how little period of time it is, I something minimum you can do if you don't know what mantra you need to say or whatever um, is there's three questions you can ask yourself. How do I want to feel today? How do I want to make other people feel? And what do I want to create for myself today? Right. Mm. And it, the answer can be different every day, but you just kind of reflect on those questions. So like today, well, I actually did this. Say that again? I'm going to write that down. Yeah. <laughs> um, how do I want to feel today? How do I want to feel today? Yeah. How do I want to make other people feel? And what do I want to create? Okay. So for me today, I actually did that exercise. Today I decided, okay, today I want to be fun, joyful, present. Mm -hmm. I want to just be present and I want to be super joyful today. That's what I want. Today I want others to feel safe. I want others to feel heard. I want whatever I do today to make people feel safe mm. to do whatever they need to do. Mm. And I want to create space to receive. Mm. I want to create space to receive more clients. I want to create space to receive more people into my programs to create more space to impact others. Mm. So that's what I wanted to create. That's I, while I'm working out this morning. So I, that's, that's like, I, when I work out, like that's kind of where I like, I'm, I'm really able to kind of connect to like my mind and meditate. Mm -hmm. And of course I've cleared all a lot of that clutter. Right. <laughs> so, cause of all the work that I've done internally, I can actually really feel this mm. right. When yet, whenever you've got a clutter, I'm telling you in the beginning, it's not going to be this like switch to, Oh, I feel this. So oh, this is just coming to me. So naturally it's not going to happen. Right. I spent over a year clearing the clutter. And now that's why I do what I do today because I can help someone in within three months get extremely clear because what took me almost two years to master by myself, I now have nailed to a science. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> so I can, so it's like, I can identify, like just talking with you today, right? Like, I don't know, maybe you can see like you, the where, words you say, I'm like, okay, that's going right back to this. And this is what we would need to explore. Yeah, I can just hear it. I can just identify it because I've become a master. Like this is my expertise, right? <laughs> so that's that's why I do what I do is because I know how quickly I can help people clear that clutter and change their game. Mm. So. Mm. All right. So I want to ask, you know, what you talk about, like the the break, you know, you got the questions and all, but that break of like a do nothing. Like the right. And again, seat. it's, it's a process. So that was the first one is first thing in the morning. I do something a little, and then in the afternoon, mm -hmm. if I, if now here's the thing, this is the beautiful part of it. In the beginning, you, the first thing you've got to do is just become aware of when you're feeling a little burnt out. Right. So it's like with my boyfriend, mm -hmm. I started like, He's like, cause I can tell like we're talking throughout the day he's in construction. So I can mm -hmm. tell like in the beginning, he's feeling good. He's feeling accomplished. And I'm just like, when is it in your day that that changes? It's like, it's like around three, four o'clock. That's when I'm ready to go. And then sometimes they work till seven, you know? So after three, four o'clock, he's not giving himself that break. Now he's in overwork mode. Yeah. Now he's in, I've got to show my worth. I've got to show my value. And by the time he gets home, seven, eight o'clock, I, I have, he's got no room to receive me or, you know, or for me to, you know, get anything else from him. He's gone, yes. you know, like it's done. Right. right. <laughs> so I'm trying like, so that's my process with him. I'm just like, you've got to start building awareness of when you're losing that, when it's right. going from, I feel good to, I don't feel good. The more you build that awareness and the more you force yourself to take that time, eventually one day it goes from you versus you to I'm actually recharging right now. Yeah. I'm actually receiving right now. I'm actually resting. I'm actually rejuvenating right mm. now. So would you say a good way and to look at it is when you wake up, you're a battery. Okay? Right. So the more the day goes on, 
your battery to, doesn't matter what you're doing it's just going to get drained so you have to take that break to start receiving you know power back right. again especially if you're someone who is in a position where you have to keep going for long hours yes and a lot of us are you know to make ends meet we have to do that right mm -hmm. um so in order to be able to do it successfully without draining our quality of life or shortening our lives yep. because of the stress and the overextending ourselves we have to recognize those moments and like i said at first it's about habit breaking it's you versus you it's yes. no different than going to the gym oh yeah you know it's like at first you don't want to do it and then later is when it's like that's all i can think about i'm ready to go work out today right mm -hmm. it's no different than anything you're doing mm. you're building a habit to receive it doesn't mean you are going full, full, the other scale. And I'm just not going to work anymore. That's not it. Mm -hmm. It's I'm going to work just as hard as I ever have, but now I'm going to get to enjoy it. Mm. Now I'm going to get to be present. Now I'm going to get to be fully charged the whole time. Because like I said, in the beginning, it's about just forcing yourself to build that boundary, to build that habit. Mm -hmm. And then eventually it becomes, wow, I received, I recharged. Now I'm ready to go back to work, but not because of a worth thing, because I feel good enough to do it. Mm -hmm. So now we're not operating on this proving ourselves. We're operating on this genuine abundance of energy. Mm -hmm. So what would you say, say somebody, you know, they're starting to be aware that there's a problem, like mm -hmm. doing X, Y, and Z, it's, nothing's manifesting, nothing's working out what do I do? What would you say the first step is to just do for them? So for me, mm -hmm. um, the, the process, at, maybe I'll get a first step out of this, but this is what's coming to my mind is just to kind of tell you like my process, if a client comes to me, mm -hmm. right? Because that's a loaded question in my mind, right? Like, well, what do I do? I'm like, okay, well, the first thing we need to do is we need clarity. Okay. We need clarity on what it is you want to do, because another thing that I find, especially for wounded masculine or overachievers is they got like a string line of all the things that they're trying to do at once. That's problem number oh, yeah. one. Oh yeah. Problem Guilty number one is they are splitting their focus. They are trying to multitask as if there's some machine and that's not going to work. Mm. So the first step is going to be clarity and narrowing down the focus. Now, let me be clear. This doesn't mean you're not going to get to achieve the whole string line. It's going to actually be the reason you do mm. because you, you break it down into what's actually most important to start with. And then you make the plan like, okay, this is the easiest way to do it. Think about all the areas of your life. Mm -hmm. Think about all the things that you want to achieve in each area, one area at a time. Now, What's the first, like, you can pick one in each area if you need to, right? What is the thing you want to achieve in each area? The first thing, the one that's on your heart, the one that maybe you can't even do the others without this one, right? Okay, so let's just start. I'll just throw one out there. Okay, let's start with, um, I'll give you two. Discipline and being better at relationships. Okay. So you want to, so let's say you want to increase discipline and being better at relationships. Okay. So essentially what we've got to do is for me, what I would do if, if a client came to me and said that these were their goals. Okay. So we've got clarity on the goals. The next thing is we need to know why, right? Like, why are we, why do we want this? And that, that can be healing in itself because it's like, well, why do I want to be better at relationships? Well, because I'm messing this up or whatever, right? Like whatever is coming up. Well, why is that important? Because I watched my mom get treated that way, whatever. I don't know. It gets deep. You know what I'm saying? It can be healing in itself to just figure out why mm -hmm. um, you're wanting to do something because it gives you this really clear perspective of what's going to make you move forward and what the point in doing the work is. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing we do is we start to figure out, okay, well, what actions do I need to take? What do I want to be more disciplined in? What actions, um, am I already in a relationship? What actions can I take to improve it? Or um, 
what do I need to do to improve my real if so if you're in a relationship we'd be focused on how to improve the current relationship if you're not in a relationship what I would focus my client on is how to improve their relationship with themselves because like you were saying earlier however you're show however the relationships are showing up it's a reflection of how you're showing up for yourself mm. so that's the first starting point right is we've got to figure out okay are we in a current relationship we've got to we we've got to work with that if we're not we've got to work with ourselves because whatever's happening, whatever patterns are ending up going on in our relationships is going to directly stem back to whatever patterns we've got going on inside. Mm. So then, right. So after we have clarity and we have some steps that we're going to take, that's when we start to dive into the emotions, into the thoughts of like, what is going on here? Mm. Like I said, it's kind of complex and I, I'm trying to give you guys it's some not, value. It's not complex. I just like, let me just simplify it for people that are listening. Cause I know exactly what you mean. And I'll just yeah. take myself for example. What, um, when I was, you know, I had this one serious relationship. Okay. But I was always just driven to work, 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 work. And when you say your relationship becomes directly a reflection of what's going on with you, you I was so obsessed with work. I was distant to everything else. And then my, that's how my relationship reflected. She became distant towards me because I never stopped to took the time to be there for her. Right. So just to simplify. So people are like, don't are kind of getting lost of what you're talking about. Just to exactly. simplify that. And then again, what you were saying is she was distanced towards you yes. because you were overworking. That is a reflection of you being distanced towards yourselves, towards right. yourself. Right. Right. Like you aren't there for yourself. Therefore, you don't have the capacity to receive anything else but work. Mm -hmm. Right. Not self-care, not love from another person, not family. You don't, you know, maybe she wanted family, maybe this, maybe that. You didn't have any room for any of that. Well, right. No, we we didn't because, you know, my, my goals were not aligned with hers. And that's fine. Like, nothing wrong with that. Right. And, but if my goals aren't aligned with her, then I'm not going to show up to how she needs me to show up and vice right. versa. Right. Gotcha. Right. And so again, clarity is going to be step one. Clarity of like, well, what do you want to achieve and like what's going on? And then going into, well, let's dissect these emotions and these thoughts and these patterns. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't build a relationship to the subconscious and what's happening and why we're showing up this way in work or in relationships and then give to ourselves what we need and build that habit of mm -hmm. self-mastery then because and i think that's another thing like i said there's a lot of concepts that i've been throwing out that i think people have a certain view on and they're like well self-mastery is i'm successful and successful is working hard right like self-mastery though in in my definition is is being able to really see all, like see everything from your observer point of view. You're mm. not constantly just showing up in an emotion. You're observing what's happening and you're able to make a real decision of how you're going to show up moving forward. And that self-mastery is being fully in control of how you are operating and showing up in your life. That is that is when you are creating your reality. That is when you're a master manifester. Mm, is like when that. you are in full control of your emotions and they're not in control of you. I like that. Yeah. Because we're always manifesting based on what we're experiencing. So if we're in control of our experience, we're in control of what we're manifesting. And we're not in control if we're always like on this roller coaster of emotions, we never know what we're going to feel next. We never know what's going to come around the corner. We never know how we're going to react. It could be this version of us, could be this version of us. We're not in the driver's seat of our reality. Mm -hmm. And that means we're not always, you know, sometimes we might here and there have moments of where we manifest something. Right, right. But I mean, even a blind squirrel finds an Right, we're always, yeah, we're always manifesting. Mm -hmm. So yes, of course, you're going to manifest here and there. But to intentionally manifest, it's a whole different experience because then you're in control. Then you are actually creating your reality. You're in, and again, there's a fine line. The universe is not going to give you what is not meant for you. You can that's why people, it, you know, just because they, that's why I'm not afraid to teach what I teach. Because if you 
learn to control this, you, you're not going to take over the world and end humankind or something that's not in alignment or in the highest good for you and everybody else. Right. You're right. not going to overpower God right. or the universe just because you know how to create. So right. So there's no just from an I am statement. Right. right. But if it is in your highest good, if it is in alignment with how the world is going to operate at its in the highest way, you'll manifest like crazy. Hmm. Now, how, right? how do you how do you like find out what you're supposed to be manifesting? Right. That's there's a quote on my wall. Mm -hmm. and it's it's aligned with this it says you have to find out who you're not to figure out who you are so i believe you have to try to manifest what you don't need in order to find out what you do mm. Mm. sometimes you know what i mean and it's just and then another thing is so sometimes it's you have to try to manifest what's not right in order for and sometimes you learn the lessons to lead you to what is right does that make sense so Every time you like you set out a goal, okay, and you you're not you you keep failing, you keep but you're always learning a lesson on that, right? You're, you're always learning a start. lesson. So here's the thing with discipline, for example, I'm trying to manifest being more disciplined. So there's a few different avenues here. So uh, for me, my experience, discipline was on my list for a while. Mm -hmm. Um. And what I actually, what happened for me, how I manifested more discipline was some, here's how the process with manifesting works is either, either you're going to figure out, you're trying to manifest something you don't need and you're going to figure out what you do need, or you're trying to manifest something you've already got. And so that's, that's what I experienced with discipline is I was telling myself, it was so simple. It was so simple as I was saying, I need to be more disciplined. In the act of me saying, I need to be more disciplined, I was discrediting to the fact that I was already disciplined. Mm -hmm. If you're in your wounded masculine, you're probably disciplined. Uh, so what helped me, and what's this is part of the manifesting process regardless. Mm -hmm. If you want more wealth, if you want more discipline, if you want more whatever, look for evidence of why you already are. Ooh. Because it might not be it might not be where you want it to be. You might not right. be at, you might be, you might be super disciplined in the gym or disciplined here or there, but you're, you want to be more disciplined in this area. Well, first you need to know in order to be more disciplined to receive more, you must give credit for the discipline you already are. Because if you're telling yourself you're not disciplined, then you're discrediting it and you're, you're, you're showing up that way. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's now that you say that it makes total sense as to <laughs> you know giving yourself um, reasons why you already are yeah so. and then you get to show up more you get more of it so again with wealth right so Beautiful. you might not think you're wealthy right you right. might not think like and, and and it's your perspective on what wealth is as well mm. right so i'm not wealthy because i don't make six figures a year right like like let's just say pretty basic that that's what the the mindset is is i'm not wealthy because i don't make this Okay. So why are you already wealthy? Mm -hmm. Do you have shoes on your feet? Do you have three meals a day? Do you have appliances, a home, a car? Like why are you already wealthy? Mm. And then that ties into gratitude. And it ties into gratitude. You're being grateful for where you are already are disciplined, where you already are wealthy, where you already are, whatever you're trying to create more of. Mm. Oprah says those who are grateful receive more. Mm. Those who complain receive less or get what they have taken from them. Ooh. And here's the thing. It's, it's, it's extremely true because if you're sitting here saying, I'm not disciplined, all right, I need to learn how to be more disciplined in the law of attraction. You're saying you're not disciplined. What can happen Ooh. is whatever discipline you already have, if you continue on not acknowledging it, you might lose that as well. Right. You might just become an undisciplined person because you're so tied up on the fact that you're not. Wow, I just got jitters there. <laughs> like, so just... it's it's how we're operating. It's how we're thinking. It's what we're thinking about. And so it's going back to that gratitude of, well, I am wealthy. And and mm -hmm. here's the thing. Let's let's drop it down even deeper than material. Do you have a beating heart right now? Mm. Wow, can you breathe automatically without thinking about it? That's magic. Mm. That is magic. <laughs> That's awesome. That's, right. oh my God. Like, I know for me, 
that sends me, that gives me chills. I'm like, oh my God, I have everything that I need literally right here. Mm. Mm. Every, everything is operating. I, I can digest food. I can taste food. I can hear, I can smell, I can see, I can talk. Mm-hmm. I've got art. Oh my God. <laughs> this is like incredible. Like I can feel it. And then now what am I radiating? I'm radiating abundance. Yeah. Yeah. And when you radiate something, mm. you become a magnet for it. Mm. Wow. It's powerful stuff. <laughs> like I'm just thinking, because I'm just, you know, tying all this in, even like the discipline, like you're saying, what am, you know, I, if somebody comes to you, uh, I want to be more disciplined, you know, it's you, what you take, like, what are you already grateful for? You know, why are you already disciplined? And you could easily tie back to, you know, I'm disciplined and I'm grateful because I never break my word to myself. And that's right there. You start feeling good. Like your self-worth improves. Yeah. Like, like, wow. Your energy, everything begins to elevate. Wow. Now, that is powerful stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that, now, where can people find you? So the best way to connect with me is probably Facebook. Um, My followers and people in my Facebook group are people I'm pretty uh, intimate with, you know, close to like I can chat with you uh, privately directly um, and like on my personal page. So it's facebook.com slash holistic healer Heather. And then my Mm -hmm. Facebook group is uh, master manifesting hub. So I've got the Facebook group. um, So it's facebook.com slash groups slash master manifesting hub for people who want to join the group. And then if you want to add me as a friend or follow me over on Facebook, then it's facebook.com slash holistic healer Heather. And then I also have a YouTube channel and a podcast myself called the, the podcast is a light and misfits. Uh, I do it with one of my clients and co-hosts. And uh, so she's a human design guide. So we kind of combine what I talk about with applying it to your human design chart. So it's pretty cool. Uh, so that's the Enlightened Misfits podcast with her. And then I've got my YouTube channel, which is Holistic Healer Heather. Okay. Now I'm definitely, we have a half, like a half hour left on here. Definitely have you say that again. But I know also you you help people manifest a bit more social media. That's one thing that I want to get into real quick because everybody needs help with the, with the um, social media. It's... It's easy, you know, everybody's like, when they first starting out, it's like not even a pebble in, you know, the Atlantic Ocean. Right. So you got to start somewhere. How how do people right. start? So again, it kind of goes back to clarity. So we need to know, like, what are you wanting to share? Because see, what I've found is if there's not some sort of consistency or some sort of message, then it's going to get lost, unfortunately, because people's attention spans are so quick. And if, if you're not speaking something to something, or if people are confused, they don't, they won't think about it long enough to to figure it out. Okay. So we, we have to have a message. We have to have like a reason. So, and I, you know, uh, it's funny. I know this whenever I started my Facebook platform, I had to have like synchronicities and consistency, consistency, consistency. You always hear that. It's all about consistency. And what consistency is, is just knowing what you're showing up for. Mm -hmm. So you have to know what you're showing up for. So let's say, you know what you're showing up for, you know, your message, you know, who you want to talk to. Okay. You're, you're ahead of the game. Then it's going to go into energy. Okay. So if you already know, let's say, so, because it depends on who I'm talking to. If I'm talking to someone who doesn't have social media or doesn't have consistency or whatever, then that's going to be the first step is we need to know who are we showing up for and why. And because that's, you know, if you Google or if you watch videos on how to start a YouTube channel, that's one of the first things they're going to tell you is, well, what's your channel about, right? If you don't have most channels that most channels are doing one thing, they're either comedy related garden related right like they have a theme if you don't have a core message or if you don't have something you're showing up for then if you go viral or if something you know blasts off it's because it's pure like it's it's almost pure just it just kind of happened and then most of the time you see those people who go start trending if they don't have a message they don't stay trending right right it just dies because they're not there's not something consistent about it they just happen to hit something that worked, you know what I'm saying? Like 
and that's going to happen if because they're consistently showing up, but they don't know why, right? Or what for. So if you're consistent, whether you're showing up for a message or not, you have the chances of going viral or start trending or whatever, get followers, but you'll lose those followers just as quickly as you gain them if you've not got a message. Right. So you, towards the algorithms of social media, like right. so I, you, you're into the personal development. So if you right. were, you do the personal development, but if you were to, I don't know, like throwing, you had a review on a football game. Yeah, you know, people are going to be like, people what are like, is happening? What? Yeah, But you exactly. kept doing that. You were consistent with that approach. You would never right. build anything. Exactly. Then what you'll find is your entire channel or your entire form of like attracting people is going to remain just as consistent as you are. Mm. But if you're just hitting here and there, and in the beginning, that's normal. I remember in the beginning, even though I was on the same kind of topic, there would be parts. So like boundaries and balance and then self-sabotage uh, or like, uh, you know, those emotions and like why we know what we need to do, but we're not doing it. Those are my two things. Like when I talk about those things, people go crazy. And then if I kind of sway a little bit, you know, as long as it's not too far off topic, those things do decent you know it stays consistent but i know the topics that people go crazy for whenever i say them yeah. right so in the beginning it's a learning process in the beginning you're gonna have to talk a little bit about everything you're passionate about in the same box right and then you just kind of see here's the key it goes back to self okay what are people ask you want to if you need to know your theme if you need to know what your topics are what advice are you giving the most mm -hmm. what what do people in your life or in general come to you for the most? Oh, that's right? good. Those are ways to help you figure out what you are a master at, what you master. And then the better you get at diagnosing problems and the better you get at showing how to get different results, you know, for example, this, this, interview is almost like a coaching session in some port parts. You know what I'm saying? The better you can diagnose the problem, right? I'm talking about experiences and you as the interviewer are already like, well, how does this me, 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 right? Like you, people are always operating in the world of me, right? So like me, myself, and I, like, how am I, like, how does this apply to me? And if it doesn't swipe, I'm going to swipe. Right. So if you want to build an audience, you need to find, you need to be speaking to that audience all the time. Otherwise it's not either, they might join you at first or they won't leave or they won't join you at all or whatever, right? It won't be consistent. Mm -hmm. So the better you get at who your audience is and what you have to offer them in terms of service. And again, this is kind of hard to answer when I don't know like what the purpose is. But like I said, if you're building, you need to know what you have, like, what are your skills? What have you studied? What do people ask you a lot about? What do you have an abundance of knowledge on? What, because that's what you're going to be able to be mo most consistent in. If yeah. you start coming on to social media, talking about, let's say you listen to this podcast and you're like, oh, I really like what she has to say, but you don't know anything about healing emotions or identifying or interpreting emotions. And you start trying to make a platform about interpreting emotions. Right. You're not going to, it's not going to work because you're going to run out of content. You might be able to post something from uh, maybe, maybe five pieces of content because of what you heard today. Mm -hmm. So you've got to figure out what you are an expert in. Yeah. Right. Sure. So you've got to figure out what you're good at. It could be comedy. It could be, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Whatever it is, it could be gym workouts. It could be anything that you're trying to, you want to talk about. Anything that you have mastered is the best thing to to build a pl platform on is to build whatever it is, whether it's TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, doesn't matter. Whatever you've gotten really good at, whatever you've experienced the most, whatever people on the street or your friends or family ask you about the most, these are the things. Mm. The things that you're showing up for consistently in private are going to do the best in when you when you share about them in public. Mm. Now, what made you... Uh... Discover that I'm just going to do the social media because you said you scaled two businesses. One was in person. Yeah. You're like, so oh, that was actually, it was actually really lucky for me because even though my salon was, you know, a local physical business, um, I actually used Facebook to grow it. 
right? Like I was constantly telling people on my Facebook page. Um, I never really used any other social media. So like I wasn't ever an Instagrammer or anything like that. So Facebook was just where I started. So I have, I used Facebook to be like, Hey, I'm going to cosmetology school. Hey, I got my license. Hey, I'm taking clients. Hey, they saw the entire process, mm-hmm. right? I didn't just jump out of nowhere and say, I have my license and it's $300 to get your hair done by me. No, I said, I'm going to school now, (laughs) right? I started from the beginning. So if you're in the beginning, that's perfect. Yes, it's going to take you time, but you, if you're not showing up, you know, and, and for me personally, I recommend if you already have a personal account, whether it's Instagram, TikTok, whatever, and you've already got kind of a following, even if it's small, just friends and family, that's still a great place to start. Yeah, That's where I started. And that's what's built, right? And I know a lot of people don't necessarily want to do that. But again, I'm going to, I'm going to suggest that that goes back to value, self-worth. What's the insecurity? Let's dig into that really quickly. (laughs) Right. So like, um, starting where you have with what you have is really good because you can still reinvent yourself without reinventing the wheel. Mm-hmm. without starting from scratch. I don't necessarily recommend business pages or or new profiles because people aren't going to connect with you. They're not going to see that you're a real person. And that's that's a big part of the entity of the brand that you're trying to create. So yeah, you might have embarrassing pictures from high school, hmm. but you're going to prove that you're freaking real. Like people are going to know, hey, this is a human being. Hey, I can scroll back and see when she started uh, to become a life coach. I can see when she was, you know, I can see the authority in her experience because over these last few years, this is what she's been building herself. People are watching. And you might be in the beginning, you might just be in the middle of getting your certification, share it, Mm. talk about it. I'm starting this. This is a milestone. This is what I'm doing. Then when you are taking on free clients, post about it. Mm. They like it. Mm. Because guess what? Some of those people who were there in the very beginning watching you, I have people sometimes Mm -hmm. that I went to school with and Mm -hmm. they've watched me go from hairdresser to life coach over these last seven years. And they message me and they're like, I get your emails and I'm just really proud of you. Like, this is really awesome what you're doing. Like people that have been in my life since I was 14, younger, you know, and it's because I allowed my personal page to just be the stepping stone that I took. And then of course, from there, I'm building my YouTube and what, why is my YouTube got the the subscribers that it does? I don't have a lot, right? I'm just new. Um, YouTube's a lot newer, but yeah. like the ones that I have are because of the foundation on Facebook. Now, would you say that process is the exact same for everyone, every platform? Cause you said you just went over to YouTube. Not- like I said, um, I think it can be Mm -hmm. if you've already got, like, let's say Instagram, let's say you've, you've got all your friends and family from school and whatnot on Instagram and some random followers because they like your aesthetic, whatever, even though you had no rhyme or reason to whatever you were doing, but you got really good at making your Instagram look good. Mm -hmm. I think it's the same. Like you start posting, Hey, I'm in school for this. Hey, I'm Mm -hmm. taking a class on this. Hey, I'm learning this. Hey, I'm starting at the gym today. Mm. whatever it is, Mm. whatever you're starting, you just say, Hey, look, I'm exploring. This This is what I want to do. This is what I want to create. This is who I'm learning to be. And you just say, I'm starting at the gym today. A year from now, when you've lost a hundred something pounds, you've got your milestone pictures Mm -hmm. or whatever it is, right? Like that's just an example. Right. And then a year, two years, from mastering that technique that you've been sharing your journey on. Now you've got a program to teach other people how to do it. And people are flooding in Mm. Mm. because they've saw, they watch you go from where you were to where you are. And that can be a really, really good thing. That is one of the reasons why I recommend documenting the entire process. Even if you're just starting out, I did, and it Mm. worked really well for me. Now, of course, there are people in my audience that weren't there in the beginning, but because of the engagement my posts have and like because they can go back for ages if they really want to, Mm. I'm automatically immediately showing authenticity and realness for them. It's not this like, what is this? Is this a scam? You know, it's not it's not sketchy. You're not Mm. like in a sketchy situation where people don't can't understand if you're human or not. (laughs) 
So that's at least that's, I don't know. I hope that's helpful, but that's how I interpret it the best. No, it's helpful for sure. And just one last question on the social media. How important do you think it is to have comfortability with a platform to be like, that's where I share my, because you said you did the Facebook, but not the Instagram. Right. I think it's important, especially when you're just starting out, because when you're just starting out, you've already got a lot to learn and a lot to take on. Um, I, I don't think I would be as successful or as far into my following that I have built. Um, had I tried to just start with Instagram, even though I do have a personal Instagram account, I do have a personal Instagram account, but I never, it was, it was like, just because I had it, like it was never this consistent thing. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm not comfortable with Instagram. I don't really know how it works as well, but Facebook is super easy for me. Right. So yeah, I definitely think whatever feels easy for you and whatever you've used the most Mm -hmm. is probably the best one um, because, you know, you're going to be able to move quicker with it and you're going, you already know kind of what works, right? Like you already know what gets the best engagement on your Facebook or or on your, or on your Instagram or TikTok or whatever versus what isn't because they're all different. Right. I'd even take that a little bit further is with the Facebook, you enjoy the Facebook. So you'll, put more, you're going to put more resources into the Facebook. Like right. you want to learn more. Cause I, right. I know I'm the same way with just reverse with Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. Like I like that platform better. So I'm going to yeah. put more into that. Well, and another thing too, is as a business owner, not only did I use my personal page to get clients and referrals with yeah. as a hairdresser, but I learned how to operate Facebook ads. So mm. I was getting paid and organic clientele. And that transferred so easily when I went virtual because now I can run ads to my events or to my master classes or to whatever I want to run ads to. And now I've got a bunch of new perspectives, you know, so it just worked out because, you know, and like I said, I just, I, I started on Facebook as soon as I think we were old enough to start on Facebook or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it was only for college people and then they opened yep. it up for more people. Yep. And then I joined it immediately and I'm like 12 <laughs> shouldn't mm-hmm. be on Facebook, but I was <laughs> mm-hmm. right. And so I was just posting stupid crap. Like, uh, but anyways, you know, I just, I let it evolve. Right. And I didn't, I decided that I'm not going to let whatever I've experienced over these last few years define my success as I transition as a salon owner, or as a life coach or whatever, whatever I'm doing, like I'm not going to let my mistakes from high school or whatever it was uh, being bullied. And I was, I was heavily bullied <laughs> in school, you know, and a lot of people from school are on my Facebook page. I had to decide again, what's more important. The person who told me I couldn't do it or the person that told me I'm stupid or that I suck, or is it what I want to create in my life? I'm going to be in control of that emotion of those insecurities. I'm not going to let those have power. Right. Mm. And again, it goes back to that. So. Mm. Yes. Okay. One final question. At what point did you know that all right, I'm an authority on this subject? I'm going to, it's time to get it out there. I think when I got results for myself, I think when I actually, when the clutter started to clear and Mm -hmm. I could really like interpret those messages from my emotions. And I knew when they were like, when, when my emotions stopped controlling me and I became in control, I couldn't shut up about it. And that was when I knew I had to find people who were ready for that information. Almost like you got that, uh, your consciousness was telling you, all right, it's time to transcend this into other people. Yeah. Because like, of course, in the beginning, I was trying to figure it out. But once it's like, once I figured it out, it's kind of like, again, any with anything like you, when you start going to the gym, maybe you're not talking about it so much, you know, too much. But once you start seeing results and people start asking you, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Right. It's kind of that it was, it was kind of like that. Um, but for me, it was a little opposite because it was so internal that people didn't really, it wasn't like a physical result that people could see. So it wasn't like people are like, well, what are you doing? Other than sometimes they would see like how much happier I was. And they're like, you, you seem really happy. And uh, they had just watched me, you know, go through my father's death and, and my traumatic divorce. And they saw me at my worst, you know, 
And so here I am like a year or so later after doing all that work, they're like, wow, you know, so they're like, what is, you know, what's, what's happened. And then I'm just like, but I'm already talking about it. I'm like emotions, emotions and manifest and heal. And I'm like, I'm just like spouting it out like crazy. Like I'm just obsessed with talking about all of it. So they're like, what is going on? You know, <laughs> but it's, it's good. It's a good thing. They're like, um, this is really cool. Like I, the sometimes that I, I don't know what the hell you're talking about, but this is awesome. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, without a doubt. You know, yeah. there's nothing more beautiful coming across somebody when you go to, you know, somebody like, oh, how's your job? Oh, it's all right. It sucks. Like, yeah. But then you're like, you find something, you just keep digging. You, there's something there. And they just like, you could, their eyes light up and they talk about it. They're like, yeah. yes, that right there. That is your mission. Right. Do exactly. that. Do exactly. more of that. Exactly. And that's why I was saying, like, if you don't know what you're going to talk about, then it's just a matter of figuring out like, well, what, what have you mastered? What have you mastered? And if someone's asking you like, what are you doing? It's that, that's the thing, especially yeah. if it lights you up, like you're saying, especially if you get really excited about it, or if you could talk about it forever. Yeah. And I, I think most people, they, they just, they can't come to that realization that that is their worth. Like they can pr transcend that to other people in some form. And it's always well, that and what came that to me, what stuck. came to me when I said that is, is I immediately heard the question of, well, I don't have that. I don't have a thing, right? Is like mm -hmm. some people, right? Like if you're already an entrepreneur, then you've already got your thing. But if you're trying to figure out what your thing is, then that's your immediate thought is, well, I don't have that thing that I've I've mastered or whatever. So there's two things with that. Again, go back to that discipline thing look for evidence of what you are a master of. Instead, you may mm. find that you have mastered something that you're not giving yourself credit for. Mm. Um, you've never allowed yourself to step into mastery because you're not acknowledging something or what do you want to learn about? You know, like what, what do you watch on YouTube or TikTok or what do you follow on Instagram? What do you enjoy the most? Right. Mm. Do you want to learn how to do any of that? Then you know what I'm saying? Like if you, if you genuinely just don't, you haven't taken the time to learn or explore then that might be what that insecurity or that voice is telling you is we need to learn. We need to explore or the other end you have learned, you have explored. You're not giving yourself credit for what you are a master of right now. Yeah. So it, it could be one or the other. And so it's like, look for the evidence. And if you're really genuinely not finding evidence, instead of beating yourself up and like crawling in a hole because of it, what do you want to learn? What are you mm -hmm. following all the time? What do you want to go learn? Become a master of something that you find spark in. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. All right, Heather, once again, where can people find you at? Because uh, Again, the best place for me is Facebook. So facebook.com slash holistic healer, Heather. And then my uh, my group on Facebook is uh, Master Manifesting Hub. And then my YouTube channel is Holistic Healer, Heather. Awesome. All right, Heather, this has been beautiful. Thank you so yes, much for coming so on much. the show. This is awesome. Guys, check this woman out. She is fantastic. Heather Forrester, guys. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. I appreciate it.